Whether it's the fighting game community or the anime game community, the anime arena fighter genre has garnered a reputation for belonging in the lower effort spectrum of gaming. But as a result of this preconception of the genre being lazy, people's analysis of the genre has become just as lazy. As someone who has invested a lot of time in Ultimate Ninja Storm games, I've often heard people compare other arena fighters to Storm and even at times calling them a Storm clone. Now these comments would often leave a sour taste in my mouth, not even necessarily in defense of any of those games, but really because I've always felt like these comparisons were superficial and only looking at these games from the most bare-bone viewpoint. One Piece Burning Blood, a game that I'm sure some people out there would look at and think it's just a storm clone, despite the fact that it doesn't have a universal dash mechanic, each character has three different special skills that cost no meter, there are different character archetypes based on the type of hockey they have, Yet even while having all of these essential game design elements that go completely against the way Storm works, people will still call it a Storm clone. Even something like Jump Force, a game that has three different escape mechanics, four different special skills at varying meter cost, fast paced action that cuts corners in the fluidity of the movement, instant transmissions doing combos, doesn't matter, I've seen people call it a Storm clone. You see, due to the popularity of the Storm games, it has continuously been attributed as the sole cause for the rise of anime arena fighters during the last few years. But despite none of these games playing remotely like each other, they're still treated like they do. And this only happens with arena fighters. This never happens with 2D or 3D fighters despite the fact that I can easily make the exact same misleading argument about a lot of games from those genres. Also, with the amount of times people have complained about the oversaturation of arena fighters, despite not being as much as I think people believe there are, I feel like people overestimate how often arena fighters get released. I feel like you could make a better argument for visual novels and gacha games, though then again, I don't think people would even be aware of it since a lot of them are region locked and western fans have a bigger tendency to focus on action oriented anime, especially ones with the shonen tag and of course those IPs are going to have a bigger tendency of being adapted into fighting games. But even with that said, I would think that this public demand for other games would be reflected in the sales, yet I see plenty of great anime 2D fighters get swept under the rug by the community. But that's a completely different subject, maybe someone could make the argument that it's justified with arena fighters because they don't do enough to make them distinct from each other. But I disagree, in fact today I'm gonna pick the game that has received probably the largest numbers of accusations of being a storm clone, which is Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles. Now this title is the perfect example for this video, simply because, as a matter of fact, I do think it's very similar to Storm. The main campaign is structured very similarly, some elements of the presentations are taken directly from Storm, like the camera movements, the end cards, the art style of the cell shaded animation. If you look at these two games, it's very obvious that they were made by the same studio. But when looking at the most integral element, that being the gameplay, they're very different. Now each Storm game from the very first to the last one have their own set of differences that make each apart from each other, but at their core they're generally born from the same architecture. If you know how to play one of them, you can probably adapt to the other ones pretty easily. Now, over a year ago, I made a video talking about a hypothetical competitive Storm game. Basically, it was me suggesting a few features that could have been implemented in a Storm-like game that would have allowed for more high-level gameplay. Now, the funny thing about that video is that some of my suggestions were actually on some level addressed by Demon Slayer, just not in a way that I explicitly laid out. And what I've come to realize is that those changes I suggested would have ended up changing the way Storm plays to an extent that I didn't even consider. Let's talk about my first suggestion, which was in regards to combo starters. You see, Storm is a very auto combo driven game and one of the main characteristics that results from this is that in general there are only two ways to create combo startups. One is using tilts which is exclusive to some characters and the other one is by doing the traditional 3 to 4 circle inputs until you have the option to do either a neutral, low or high combo. There used to be side combos but they removed it. Now what I wanted was for them to implement something identical to what Kill a Kill If does in which auto combos are split between 3 stages, startup, mid combo and finisher and with each one you have the option to pick between neutral, vertical or horizontal tails and they're all interchangeable meaning that I could either do a full neutral auto combo by just mashing circle or I could do a vertical startup for an anti-air, mid combo isn't relevant because it's the same attack and end it off with a horizontal combo finisher with a few additional inputs, typically higher than neutral finishers. Of course you have other options such as using projectiles and guard breaking attacks during your combos. 
But all of this culminates in a variety of opportunities to set up attacks, which also widens the neutral game even further. That was the thing that I felt Storm always missed. Now, Hinokami Chronicles doesn't have the exact same multiple auto combo startup system that Kill a Kill If has, but it does actually have more ways of kicking off combos, and this is largely thanks to special skills. You have three different special kills, activated using the triangle button, and typically they all can be chained with other attacks. That was never the case with Storm. You use a normal jutsu and that was usually the end of the combo. And you only really had one per character. With Demon Slayer you have three, hell, five if you're talking about demons. You can also use tilts that have guard breaking damage and air strong attacks by clicking square and aiming the analog upwards while you're in the air. And this variety has affected the way the neutral game works in Demon Slayer. Much different than in Storm, where mix-ups are largely about trying to break guards by mashing auto combo, dashing forward, utilizing the leader switch, and sidestepping to feint movements and attacks. In Hinokama Chronicles, the movements are noticeably more limited. They don't give you as much freedom with the leader switch, even jump cancels are more expensive to use since in Storm, they don't even cost any chakra. Air dashes are also nerfed, overall it's less reliable to use mind games with movements alone. So most of the mix-ups are based on the attack options that you have. Both games bank on guard breaks for complex mix-ups, but Demon Slayer encourages a more oppressive style of play compared to Storm 4. Which is interesting because depending on who you ask, you'll get varying opinions on these games. For example, veteran Storm players find Demon Slayer to be too restrictive, but I actually have the exact opposite opinion. I find Storm 4 to be too limiting and the difference in perspective really boils down to where you're analyzing this from. I value the variety of openings and combo creativity, which is why I always found Storm to be too limiting. Projectiles are mostly one hit, you only have one jutsu special, many requiring specific frame perfect attacks in order to be chained into an ongoing combo, which isn't held by the chaotic frame data that the game has. Sometimes the hit stun isn't high enough for different attack sequences, which makes it hard to extend combos after a strike back or any air bounces. However, I also recognize that the leader switch is an integral part of the Storm 4 meta, and in Demon Slayer, leader switch is much more limited, not just because it lacks the same looseness that Storm 4 had, but also because it's more costly to use due to how the game doesn't have a sub bar and takes away your entire support gauge. Switching is also not as snappy as Storm 4. Holding L1 feels clunkier compared to the quick response analog tilt. It's also much more grounded. In Stone 4, I can seamlessly switch between three characters while doing an air combo. Good luck doing the same thing with Demon Slayer. Speaking of the support gauge, another thing I also suggested in my competitive Storm game video was for the D-pad to be used for more unique abilities instead of the ninja toolkit. Now, Demon Slayer doesn't utilize the D-pad for anything, the buttons are completely blank. However, the game does have something that is similar to what I was requesting, which is demon skills. Admittedly something that is exclusive to demon characters, but they could function exactly the same way I was suggesting in my video. There are a set of two unique skills that I would say work better than what I was basing my idea off of because much like the normal skills, they can also be chained with other attacks, which expands on the variety of combos and also allows characters to be even more unique. Although interestingly, let's say hypothetically that Cyber Connect 2 decides to allow demons to have support characters instead of just making it exclusive to slayers. If that were the case, I think it would actually be a good idea to utilize the d-pad for two extra skills or more if they decided to be more creative. They could also expand it to the slayers as well. That's a suggestion that I have and I actually think it would improve the game even further. But regardless, this discussion I'm having right now is impossible to be had with Storm 4 because fundamentally, they're just not the same game. The control schemes are different, the movements are different, the mechanics are very different, even the most basic barebone aspect of these games, that being the auto combo, are designed not the same way. Demon Slayer has a time limiter which prevents infinites from happening. Storm 4 has a bigger meter supply and no cost for jump cancels which allows characters to be trapped in infinites, only broken out of using the inexpensive substitution bar. It has seen animations during auto combo finishers which is what marks the end of the circle mashing, while Demon Slayer forces you to exhaust your resources once you've landed a combo in order to make use of the time limiter or how the combo skipping mechanic, something that I would consider to be integral to Storm's gameplay, allows you to escape 4 times before the next cooling period and lands you behind your opponent which forces you to predict the exact timing in order to know which resources to use, such as chakra dashes, leader switch, 
or even character specific traits such as how he touches down combo, creates clones that widens the hitbox and could leave you vulnerable to getting hit even after subbing. Meanwhile in Demon Slayer the meter cost is very different, you can only do it once and you don't land behind the opponents. Even someone like me who doesn't play either of these games competitively can recognize the differences between these two games and how much they vary in terms of gameplay. And I don't think it's even really all that hard to spot these things, these are very noticeable differences that exist between these two. Yet it's so easy to find people who look at Hinokami Chronicles and accuse it of being a storm clone. This reminds me of that one review from IGN where they describe Kill a Kill If as lacking mechanical depth and feeling like you can just mash your way out of victory. Now anyone who has played this game knows this is a complete lie and it's obvious this article was either bait or the person only played the game for like 2 minutes and shot out a sloppy review. But at the same time I honestly can't imagine the average game we're not reaching the exact same conclusion. And one of the reasons why I'm making this video is that I've been following the competitive scene in Storm 4 for years at this point. And to me it's kind of funny seeing people who've never seen high level matches getting their brain scrambled due to how borderline incomprehensible some of the matches can be. I of course know what's going on because I more or less understand how the game works, but a lot of people who probably just bought Storm 4, played it for a month or two and never got super deep in the competitive scene, they tend to get pretty fucking surprised by how high level the matches can be. And the irony lies in the fact that at the end of the day, I still think Storm 4 is just a party game. The first ever Ultimate Ninja game was designed to be a party game, even confirmed by Matsuyama that the PS2 games were akin to the old Smash Bros. And Storm 4 being a part of the Ultimate Ninja series shares a lot of that party game DNA. And I don't think in terms of its potential in the competitive scene, it really dives that deep in the possibilities that the arena fighters can offer. But even just seeing what the community has done to elevate the standards of high level gameplay is astonishing. Which is why I encourage people to change the way we have conversation about arena fighters. Don't get me wrong, I love 2D fighters too, I suck off to them as much as you do, and yes, I know in the past, especially during the previous decade, there was an influx of underwhelming arena fighters that were coming out and were repeatedly disappointing the players. But I think that for a while we've been emerging in an ever developing wave of arena fighters elevating the scene. And if you ask me, I think people should start opening their eyes for what's been happening recently. Kill. It's gonna put him in the corner. Good reset attempt, but great just guard and just guards the assist as well. Uh, and this and is that it. will be game unless Compress comes back in time. Compress came back in time! Okay, okay! The guard, guard cancel. cancel. What is going on? The, the invisible mix! The invisible mix!